Hai, Assalamualaikum uh, May peace be upon you all Okay, we're going to con we are going to continue with the logic representation Okay, uh, so the learning outcome is I hope uh, everybody will know what is logic representation How to translate a suitable knowledge into this representation And you can critically think the advantage and disadvantage of each type of logic representation As well as other type of uh, knowledge representation so uh, these are all the representation that we have covered production rules semantic network oav as well as frames so for this lecture i'm going to divide into uh, three or four parts of video lecture to describe logic uh, as well as uh, to teach you how to do logic representation so what is logic it's actually a language like lang English, Malay language. Right, so it's a language. Uh, so when we talk about language, usually there are semantics and syntax. So syntax is uh, the symbols that we use, the symbols, character that we use, and the semantic is the meanings. Okay, and uh, don't confuse logic representation with the logical reasoning. Right, so logical reasoning, like for example, when people ask you, uh, why do you bring umbrella? You will say because logically every afternoon it will be raining. Okay, so that is logical reasoning. Okay, this is logic language. Okay, logic representation. So again, the syntax and semantics. Uh, syntax is the symbols that we use. For example, in English and Malay, we have letters. Uh, in Arabic, uh, we have all the alphabets: alif, bata, ujawi, right? And we are allowed to combine the symbols to perform a sentence and words. Okay, and semantic is the meaning. So some people will read a sentence or understand the same sentence differently. Okay, so we have to create a good sentence so that everybody understand uh, similar meaning. So the hierarchy of logic. Okay, first we have a uh, propositional logic. And then they found a weakness in proposi propositional logic. Uh, uh, we have predicate logic. And then uh, advancement in a first order logic. And last is higher order logic. So the first one is propositional logic. So this is the first type of logic. Uh, and we have to assign each sentence whether that is true or false or unknown. Okay. So... Uh, each sentence okay, will be represented by a symbol. Okay, and these are the symbols. Okay. The first one is and or implies equivalent and not. Uh, so there are several types of representation. So please stick to one if you use the first column. So everything must use the first column. If you want to use the second one. So, you and or implies equivalent and not must follow this symbol. So, same with the third column. Okay. So, propositional long logic or PL is a simple language to show a key idea and a definition. So, we define a set of proposition symbol like P and Q for example. So, it is a sentence. Alright. So, it is hot. It's a sentence, so we represent the whole sentence as P. It is humid, it's a fact, one sentence. For example, represent with Q and it will rain, uh, represented by R. Okay, so each sentence is a symbol. So these are the logic. If S is a sentence, then not S is a sentence as well. For example, if uh, it will rain, is a sentence, so it will not rain, is also a sentence. So, if S is a sentence, then S in a bracket also is a sentence. If S and T are sentences, then S or T, S and T, S implies T, and S equivalent to T are sentences. Okay, so that means we can combine uh, one with another sentences, two or three or four, etc. to make another sentences. Okay. So, example of a uh, PL sentence, as I say, uh, it is hot is P, uh, sorry, it is hot is P, 
it is humid is Q, it is uh, it will rain is L. So if you combine this P and Q, okay, if it is hot and it is humid implies or then it will rain. The second one is if it is humid then it is hot and Q it is humid. So you can represent this symbol uh, or representation with another representation uh, for you to remember easily. For example, it is hot, we just take HO. Okay, humid HU are remain as rain. So this is just a symbol like the variables. Okay, another terms. Okay, is about whether the sentence is valid or not. Okay, so we call a true sentence under all interpretation as tautology. Okay, for example, a sentence, it is raining. Okay, it's a sentence that is tautology. Uh, or it is not raining. Okay, it is raining or it's not raining. It's always true because at one point of time, it could be raining or it's not raining. So, it's correct. Okay, so in every condition, that will be true. It's either raining or not. That is tautology. Okay, the inconsistent sentence is whether that not where there is a contradiction and it is false under all interpretation that means in all condition it is not true false okay for example it is raining and it's not raining so uh, do you understand that it's it is not logic at one point of time uh, you can say that uh, i'm in front of my house now it is raining and it is not raining so it doesn't make sense it's not it doesn't it's not logic at all Okay, so it's false under all interpretation. So the third one is P and tails Q. So it's meaning uh, whenever P is true, so Q is also true. Okay, so when we talk about logic, uh, these are the truth tables, the basic one. Okay, uh, so when we say not, that means it's the other way around. So if P is true, not P is false. Okay, and N Okay, this is just um, a recap of what we have learned in our high school. Okay, it's both true and is true, or is also true, implies is true, equivalent is also true. If true and false, and will become false. Or true, okay, implies and is all is false. If the first one is false, the second one is true. Okay, uh, the N is false. Okay, the or is true. Then is true. Uh, equivalent is false. If both false, N is become false. Or become false. Uh, then is true. Implies is true. So the other representation of this is using a Venn diagram. Okay, P or Q. P and Q is only the in, uh, the overlap between those uh, subsets. P then Q, that means the rest of the P, uh, including the uh, overlap uh, area. And P then Q, only the overlap area and not P and not Q. Okay, we also have an inference rule. Okay, logical inference uh, is to create new sentences that logically follow from a given sentence of predicate calculus in the knowledge base. Okay, so we have a list of uh, facts that we get from the expert. So we represent that in a sentences using logic. So we call these sentences where we say the sentences as a knowledge base. So like a database, but this is a knowledge base. So, an inference rule is sound if every sentence produced by an inference rule operating on the knowledge base logically follows from the knowledge base. So, there are no contradict rules. Okay, and the inference rule is complete when uh, all the conclusion okay, uh, can be achieved by using all the uh, sentences in the uh, knowledge base. And sound of rule, okay, this is not sound of music. Sounds mean uh, it's uh, logic, it is acceptable, okay. So, acceptable rules of inference, okay. Uh, we have modest rules, we have introduction, 
elimination, double negation, unit resolution and resolution. So A, A then B, the conclusion will be B. Because this is the same. So the conclusion is B. A and B, so the conclusion is both must be at the same time. So both must be true or both must be false. And elimination A and B become A, not, not double negation. So just imagine this as a negative and negative. So negative and negative, you will get positive. So you A. A or B with not B. So this is contradict. So you can just eliminate this. So that's why we have A as the conclusion. A or B, not B or C. So you can see that this is B and this is not B. So you can just eliminate the B, delete the B because it's contradict. So the conclusion you have O, A or V, eh, sorry, A or C. Okay, so sound agreement again is all true premise plus the valid argument. Okay. So uh, based on the modest bonus we have looked before. Uh, so true, true implies true. So this is correct. Okay, so this is just to double check the model exponents. Okay, proving things. So how do we prove? Okay, a proof is a sequence of sentence. So we have to tell, okay, uh, we came up to this conclusion because there are rules number 1 and number 2 and number 3 that support uh, the conclusion uh, of a theory that we get. Okay, so that is a sequence of sentences knowledge base. And that is infer inference by the, uh, by the theorem that we got. The theorem is actually the goal. Okay, the conclusion that we want to prove. So you can do by goal driven that's mean given to you is a goal and we have to backtrack from that goal what is the rules that make that condition uh, at that goal right or the other way around given to you is a proof so you follow the knowledge base to see what will be the final conclusion okay or the goal right now, example, let's look at the example uh, of the weather problem. Uh, it is humid. Okay, sentence number two. It is humid. It is hot. Uh, sentence number three. Sorry, sentence number three is it is hot. Okay, sentence number four. It is hot and it is humid. Then, it will rain. Okay, so how do you got, uh, how do we get it is hot and it is humid. Okay, from the introduction of number one and number three. So it is hot and it is humid. And then we get into the conclusion R. It is raining. So uh, to prove this, it is raining because there is a knowledge of, of sentence number four and five. There is hot and humid will rain. And now, it is hot and humid. So, that's why we have the theorem as R. It is raining. Okay, so that's why I said you can backtrack. Either you given to you, it's raining. And then you find what are the proof that is 4 and 5. Or from 4, you come to the conclusion of it is raining. Alright, so this is the first video lecture. I will continue with the entailment and derivation of the propositional logic. Thank you.